Today at Panem360, we are very pleased to have with us Jaden Isaac Zerko, who is the most recent grand winner of the CMIM Piano 2024 competition, uh, the first Canadian to won the, the big awards uh, for the competition. Jaden, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with us in your busy schedule. It's a pleasure. Thank you. You're welcome. So uh, as we are speaking right now, we are exactly two weeks uh, after the finale of the Piano 2024 edition of the CMIM. Um, what have you been up to since then? I was quite lucky to have a performance opportunity very soon after the competition finished. So I went down to the United States to Arkansas to perform Mozart's 20th Piano Concerto. Okay. And since then, I've been enjoying some time at home. So you had a little bit of time to let the dust settle in of the competition and then off to new adventures. That's right. Right. Um, if we go down memory lane back a few weeks during the early days of, and stages of the competition itself, um, how did it go for you as a whole and how did you approach each different stage of the competition going from the first round, uh, the semifinal with the chamber music part and the recital? Um, how did you personally um, uh, took part uh, personally in it? Um, well, I my approach to competitions of this kind to help my nerves and to keep my mind focused on, on yeah. what really matters is just to try to treat every occasion to perform as though it's just a, a musical performance, an opportunity to share with the audience. I try to keep out of mind as much as possible the ranking component of the competition, the elimination rounds, etc. And um, that, that was actually especially easy to do in this case because the level of playing was so high among all the competitors that I, I sincerely enjoyed myself listening to everyone else's performances. I heard so many memorable renditions of, of fantastic repertoire. So um, although there were, there were nerves and there was a bit of anxiety throughout the competition, it was also a very enjoyable two weeks of music making and music enjoyment for me. Mm -hmm. um... For the, the chamber music part, which was the, the first time that in the CMIM that were, they were doing this kind of a of round for the uh, the elimination rounds, um, you played the uh, Schumann, uh, the, the first movement of the uh, piano uh, quartet with uh, uh, viola, uh, cello, and violin. Um, how did the relationship and work with the the three soloists of the uh, OSM uh, went for you? Oh, it was a, a real privilege and an honor to share the stage with them. They were extremely warm and gracious and, and a pleasure to work with. They certainly had a challenge in presenting the same movement by Schumann many, many times and um, and trying to adjust to the preferred interpretation of each of the competitors. Mm -hmm. So I certainly don't envy their job on that competition, yeah. but it was, it was such a pleasure to perform with them. Yeah. And... For you too, also because you were, I think, what uh, seven uh, in the same competition. I have, the, with luck has it that you, it was a seven. Uh, the all seven of you of the tenth chose the exact same work to to, right. to be performed. So, um, it, did it affect you in any way um, of to uh, how to compare yourself to others when it's difficult to do so, or were you, like you said earlier, really focused and just enjoy the music making with not thinking about the ranking and the, the comparisons. I think that was my approach in that round too. I did listen to one or two competitors play the Schumann from the audience before it was my turn to play. Mm -hmm. and I think that, that did sort of help me in gauging the balance and how the piano projects alongside the strings in the hall. So I suppose that was a benefit to so many of us playing the same piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can took advantage of what you are listening to uh, others and then try to do a little bit different in what you had in mind. Right. Right. Um, on the night of the finale, um, on such competitions like that, you, you, like you said, um, you, you're trying to not focus on, you know, the, the ranking and, you know, the, the, the so much on the anxiety that is natural in, in that kind of circumstances. But um, what goes on in, in the mind uh, of a pianist, of a performer, when they are uh, in front of, of, a, of a hall uh, with, with an orchestra, um, what goes on in your mind uh, when you are playing on that kind of stage? Uh, you, you you spoke to me about uh, what you wanted to communicate um, with uh, the Brahms uh, Second Concerto. 
um, did you achieve what you wanted to achieve? And um, what was uh, going on then in, in your mind during all of the, the time that uh, your performance uh, went? My mind was certainly on the work. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course. Uh, such a, a masterpiece, a huge piece to prepare. So uh, I was I did I was doing a lot of detailed practice and interpretive work leading up to the performance. Mm -hmm. uh, my I think I was also thinking quite a lot about the ensemble with the orchestra and and playing together and balancing ourselves correctly. the uh, The competition was sort of a difficult circumstance for me just because of how long my concerto was. the The rehearsal time that I had was actually not quite enough to cover the entire concerto. Hey. So there were some small passages of the concerto that we performed as an ensemble for the very first time together on stage hey. during the actual hey. performance. Um, but it was it was wonderful to be under the the direction of Maestro Zhang. She was incredibly mm -hmm. clear and, and very accommodating of all of my interpretive desires. And she was it was it was an, an honor to share the stage with with her and of course with the wonderful OSM. Mm, yeah, and correct me if I'm wrong, but um, did one of the piano strings broke during uh, your your performance? Yeah, one broke during the performance, I believe in the second movement. And actually I broke two others in the rehearsal earlier that day. Okay. Wow. So, so and did, did it affect uh, mostly in, a, uh, in, the, in, the, in the night of the finale, did it, did it affect your, your your playing or not so much? I think it probably caused me to to divert my concentration for a brief moment. Um, I think I recovered rather well from that, but it, it's inevitable that you notice it happening. It's it's a rather unpleasant sound, and, <laughs> and really, the impact is not enjoyable from the from the player's perspective. Yeah, and uh, one more thing to have to keep in mind when you're playing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, uh, you were also awarded the prize. For for the best interpretation of the Canadian imposed work, Mzizakok Miniwa Mzizakunsak by Anishinaabe composer Barbara Aseganak. Um, again, it was a very creative work that you were, that all of you, uh, all of the 10 uh, finalists created. Um, was it easy to put your own perspective and, and interpretive way uh, in the piece since you were all performing it uh, in different manners. So was it easy to try to make it feel different of uh, of all the others? Uh, I For that particular work, I didn't exactly think in those terms. Mostly my ambition with that piece was to try to, as faithfully as possible, render what the composer had marked. Okay. Um, she's, she's a very detailed composer. Her notation is very specific and precise. There's all kinds of, of little breath marks and tenutos all right. over the score. So my my prime ambition there was was simply to to as best as possible express all of the little details that she had marked in the score. Mm -hmm. You are also um, taking part in the Leeds competition uh, in September. Um, how does your preparation is uh, is going for for that? And it, how does it compare to um, the CMIM competition in Montreal? And uh, I'm I'm certainly working hard in preparation for that. There there are a couple of of sort of minor differences in the Leeds competition. They ask you to propose two different programs for each round, and then the jury will select which one they'd like to hear. So I suppose there's a little bit more uncertainty, a, a couple more variables mm -hmm. going into the competition than there was at the CMIM. Mm -hmm. um, also, I don't have the advantage of competing in my home country the yeah. way I would in Montreal. Um, but uh, I, I think it'll be a, a very enjoyable experience. There's some music that I played in Montreal that I'll be performing again, but also quite a few works that will be new. Um, so I, I'm really looking forward to it. With the uh, the amount of you know, uh, opportunities that come with winning the first prize, there's also a... Um, the opportunity to perform a, re a solo recital in the season of 2025-2026 uh, of the Coast Recital Society in British Columbia, your home province. So I um, suppose that you are also looking forward to that. Certainly. I actually, I've been fortunate enough to perform for that series before. Okay. So, yeah, I look forward to going back and playing there again. What's next to you uh, as uh, in terms of concerts and um, projects that you have in mind for the next uh, 
months or, or year. Mm. Well, I'm very pleased that I get another opportunity to perform Brahms' second concerto mm. in, uh, in I think, just over a week in Tenerife in Spain. Uh, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to giving that piece another try. It was my very first time performing that concerto in Montreal. So I, I'm really excited to get to, to enjoy all that music on stage again. Uh, and then shortly after, I'm actually recording a CD of hey. sonatas by Padre Antonio Soler, the Spanish Baroque composer. Okay. So it, it's been wonderful working through his, his sonatas and, and cultivating my sense of style for that period. Mm -hmm. And then uh, at the end of June, I get to perform in a concert alongside one of my musical sources of inspiration and a great Canadian artist, Angela Hewitt. She has a music festival in Perugia, Italy, and she kindly invited me to perform alongside her, along with some other pianists. So those are my my big projects for June. Wow. So really keeping uh, yourself busy with a lot of different projects and really lo looking forward for that uh, uh, CD. That was a question that I had in mind, uh, if you had any kind of uh, recording uh, plans and what were those uh, the, the composer that you might choose for for your work. So, what what made you chose um, this particular composer? Uh, actually, I wasn't the one who chose okay. the program for yeah. that particular disc. I believe uh, Naxos is is trying to increase their catalog of of Soler's music. Okay, so they they gave me certain works that I was to record. Uh, a month before the CMIM, I did record a disc of my own preferred works. Um, okay. Madrid, also for Naxos. So that that CD will contain sonatas by Scriabin and Rachmaninoff, as well as some works that Scriabin wrote when he was quite a young student, mm -hmm. works that haven't been formally published under an opus number. Yeah, right. So again, keeping yourself busy with a lot of music, and uh, we are looking for, forward to follow your, your career path that is already well in March. So uh, thank you very much, Didin, for taking the time to speak with us uh, at Panem360 and uh, see you around. Thank you very much for having me. You're welcome.